Hello and welcome to this quick start tutorial for Overtone Analyzer. In this video I will show you the main features of the program and how to use them. After watching this video you will know how to record and visualize your voice or instrument with Overtone Analyzer. To make it easy for you to follow this video, I have created a profile with all the settings that I'm going to use here. To apply this find the Select Profile List box on the toolbar Click on it and then select the Quick Start preset. Applying this profile will bring the program in the same configuration that I'm using in this video here, so that if you try to follow the video you can be sure that you have exactly the same settings that I have. Now let's look at the configuration of your microphone. This is the input volume control on the toolbar. If you point at it with the mouse, you can see which input device is currently selected. If you right click on this control, you can see a list of all the microphones and sound cards that are currently installed on the system. This will look different on your computer because you probably have different audio devices, but if you right click on here, you can see the list and you can select the input device that you want. Now you can notice that while I'm talking, you already see some activity here. This is the strength of the current input signal. You want to make sure that your input volume, which is this slider, and also the distance between you and the microphone are so that you're using the entire range here without ever going into the red. For example, if I move the microphone very close to my mouth, you can see that the signal is too strong and I get clipping here. That would cause artifacts in the analyzer later on, so we don't want that. Similarly, if I set the recording volume too low and move the microphone away, then you can see there's barely any activity here and I would get a recording that is barely audible and also doesn't show much detail in the analyzer. So ideally, I want to have it so that the entire range of the signal here is used and it reaches the end of the yellow but doesn't really go into the red. Now let's record something. To start the recording, click on the red button on the toolbar or press Ctrl space on your keyboard. One thing I could do, for example, is to press a tone on the keyboard and then try to match it with my voice. So start the recording, press a tone on the piano. press the spacebar or the stop button to stop the recording. Now you can see these wiggly lines here. This is the pitch of what I have just sung. Now you can see that the pitch line is not really straight but it wiggles a lot. That's because each voice has a little bit of vibrato and also humans are not perfect and I'm not a perfect singer anyway. So let's see how well I match the pitch from the piano. To do this we can zoom into the frequency. If I point the mouse at this frequency scale here and then rotate the mouse wheel, I can change the frequency range. So I can drag it up and down and I can zoom in and out. If you don't have a mouse wheel because you are on a laptop, you can push the 1 and 2 buttons on your keyboard like this. This is exactly like using the mouse wheel and it lets you zoom with a lot of precision. So I can see now that this is my pitch here from the piano and I can now play it back to hear if I was matching it properly. So I would say on the attack I was a little bit too high but um, when I was actually singing it it's pretty much what I wanted to do. This one here looks like it's slightly too low. Okay. I can also zoom in the time scale using the same method by using the mouse wheel or the one and two buttons on my keyboard. And once I have zoomed in time a bit, I can shift the time range by dragging the slider here or I can drag the scale here if I want to scroll in time with a bit more precision or I can use the mouse wheel at the timeline on the button. So now we see how my pitch changes over time and right now the recording shows a time range 
from nine and a half seconds to 12 and a half seconds. So I call this the long term view because it has a time scale and it shows a recording over a longer period of time. Now, if I want to inspect certain parts of this recording in more detail, I can toggle the spectrum, which also shows the short term view. And this shows a detailed close up of the part where I point my mouse at on the left side. So for example, if I point exactly at 11 seconds here, then on the right side, you can see that my pitch at 11 seconds was a D3 and it was 38 cents too low. Ideally, I want to have a perfect pitch, which has no cent deviation, but because of the vibrato, it's going to alternate around the center anyway. But on the whole, I would say that this was slightly off pitch, slightly too low. So I can look at the visualization of my recording, but I can also play it back and listen to it. Just click the cursor anywhere and then click on the play button here or press space on your keyboard and it will play from that point onwards. If I want to inspect a certain area without looking at the other parts of the file, I can make a selection just by clicking and dragging somewhere here. Now you notice that there's this white frame which I can change with the mouse. Now if I play, it will just play the selection and play it in a loop. If I click anywhere, the selection will disappear. If I want to play it in a loop and then not have it disappear when I click somewhere to position the playback, I can lock it. And now I can click and it will stay. That means so you can use the selection to repeat certain parts of a recording and then play them as a loop and hear what they sound like. So far we've only looked at the pitch of my recording. So this line shows the fundamental frequency of my recording for each point in time. Now let's add the spectrum and the spectrogram. They don't show the frequency of the recording, they show how loud each frequency component or which each overtone or harmonic is. So click on the options button and then here on the left side select the analyzer view and then select spectrum and spectrogram for the short term view and the long term view. And let's scroll out the uh, frequency range a bit more here. Or you can also click on here and select standard frequency range. And now you can see the entire range. Or you could even zoom out further. And you can adjust the brightness and the contrast here with these sliders. Or you can do the same thing by manipulating the intensity scale. And that's just to make sure that we see a level of detail that is not too much and not too little. Now what we see here are the individual overtones in my voice. And the more this moves to the right, that means the louder the overtone is. So this one here, for example, is the loudest one. This is the fundamental or the first harmonic, the second, third, fourth. So this is the fourth harmonic. And at this point, it's the loudest part in my spectrum. Overtone Analyzer has a feature that can help you to understand what it really means to see these overtones here. And that is the frequency filter. So to use that, first let's make a selection. Again, by clicking and dragging and then make sure the selection is locked. And now click on the filters menu and click on add new frequency filter. What this does, it has added this gray frame now here and that removes any frequency components that are not in the filter. So you can see on the right side, there are these uh, white outlines. That means these overtones are in the original recording, but they have been filtered out by the frequency filter. Now let's play this to hear what it sounds like. So now you can hear that only the lowest overtone of my recording is audible. And if I move the filter with the mouse, now that's my second harmonic. That's my third harmonic. And that's the fourth. Now 
that's my voice without the singer's formant, which is this lid up here around 3000 Hz. And now we can hear the singer's formant just by itself. So playing with the filter can give you a feel for the harmonics in the voice and you can really hear that the voice is consisting of individual overtones that all come together to give you the sound of a voice. But by listening to them individually you get a better idea of what the overtones are and what they sound like. I've just shown you the numbers of the overtones in my recording and to make this a bit easier I have another tool which is called the overtone sliders. I can make a selection again and then click on insert note slider at selection. And this will add a single overtone slider here which is located at my fundamental frequency. And you can notice that it has these little handles and they can manipulate the number of overtones that this slider has. So you can see now it gives me the note name and the frequency for each of my sliders and I can also click and play that. So this is a tool to show what the theoretical overtones in a recording sound like and then I see what the overtones are and I can see their numbers and their exact frequencies. So now we've done a quick run through all the main features of Overtone Analyzer. It's a lot of material to cover in one session. So maybe if you listen to it again and stop the video after each section and try to reproduce it in the actual program, then you'll be using Overtone Analyzer quite proficiently in no time at all. Thanks for listening.